Whether you're a new or returning player to F123, this video will help you get started. Here we go. Starting off, you'll have to select a race style. This setting changes the complexity of the car handling model you'll actually drive on track. The casual race style is your best pick if you are unfamiliar with racing games. This race style gives you the easiest on track conditions, including a more stable car when driving over slippery surfaces like grass or an automatic reset feature when going off the track. Only a few settings are available to change for you to make it easy to get racing. The casual race style includes the adaptive AI option, which actually slows down or speeds up depending on how quick you are. The standard race style is the most commonly used race style and gives you all the settings except for a few on track simulation ones. Uh, in case you'd like the biggest challenge and most realistic feel like me, then these few extra settings are available in the expert race style. If you feel like you're familiar enough with the game to select standard or expert race style, you'll be able to adjust your driving assist as well. If you're new to F123, I can recommend you start off using the following driving assist settings. The steering and braking assist are turned off as having these on actually causes the game to partly brake and steer for you. It's better and not too hard to do this yourself. If these settings still feel too easy for you, you can slowly start turning off each assist one by one to feel a difference, or you can turn off all the assists at once, but beware, the learning curve will be steep this way. But if you plan on investing the time into the game, turning off all the assists at once would definitely be recommended. Before you head into your first race, I have some must-use settings to make your racing experience easier and faster. Go to the on-screen display settings and change the track map to full track map to be able to see the whole track, including where competitors are in the bottom left corner. This way, you know where you are compared to all other cars on track, except for just a few drivers that are close to you. The delta time helps you to see if you're improving your lap time or not during laps, so keep that enabled. Also keep the start lights enabled so you get a virtual countdown for the race start on your screen. The most important setting here are the proximity arrows. By enabling those, the game will tell you when another driver is close to you on track. White arrows point to the car that is close to you. A red arrow means the car is alongside you, so you have to watch out where you turn in. You can enable the rear view mirror as well to be able to see behind you at all times. Coupling this with the proximity arrow is actually a very strong tool to be aware of your surroundings. If the rear view mirrors distract you, which it does with me for example, turn it off and use the dedicated look behind button on your controller or steering wheel to look behind you when needed. Lastly, make sure you turn on the permanent practice and qualifying timer. This will allow you to see the time left in a session at all times, rather than only seeing it for the last five minutes. It's a no-brainer. This will be a massive help in qualifying session especially. Now the hardest part of F123 is learning all the different tracks that are in the game. They all have hugely different characteristics. The dynamic racing line assist can actually help you massively in learning where to brake and accelerate on each different track. If you do not want to use the dynamic racing line, look for brake markers in each turn of the track. Brake marker boards or any other non-moving objects are great braking points to use. You normally brake between the 50 and 150 meter board for most turns, but yeah, this depends on the turn and track. For Las Vegas and Qatar, make sure you watch my track guides on F123. F1 cars are very special cars to drive. Here are some best practices for driving the most efficiently. Try to approach a braking zone in a straight line. Then brake in a straight line as well and release the brake before you start turning. Let the car roll through the corner and slowly reapply the throttle as you exit the turn in a straight line once again as well. Also, use the trail braking technique. This means you brake full at first and then gradually remove the brake input. This optimizes the stopping power and capability of the car. Some of the curves on track will be easier to ride than others. Avoid hitting the raised curves that make your car jump up, like you can see here. You'll know what I'm talking about after driving over these particular curves yourself in game. If you want more in-depth tips that will make you faster in F123, don't forget to subscribe for my F123 no assist guide. Lastly, tuning the AI is often difficult to do. You can do it manually and adjust the AI manually as well by comparing your lap times to the one of your in-game teammate. Each second difference with your teammate equates to about 10 levels on the AI difficulty. You can then adjust the AI difficulty up or down accordingly. You can also use an AI difficulty calculator, like the one from F1 Labs, which I've linked in the description. By putting in your time trial lap time, the website then calculates your appropriate AI level. Either way works. Now don't forget to check out my controller, wheel and camera guides for the ultra head start on your competitors. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace!